Insurance, featuring low down payments and same day coverage. Welcome back to Duck Pin Magic. I'm Mike Sella with Joe Rodney. We're here at Greenway Bowl East for the uh, Pro Tour stop, the men's DPBA. It's the Miller Classic. We're midway through the ladder. We started with 13. We're down to seven. Yes, and we have Don Dove returning. Don averaged 166 last week, winning his two matches. And in the first match, he'll be bowling Chuck Kramer. We'll meet our bowlers and get to our first match coming up right after these messages. Dove and Chuck Kramer going at it in match number one. Kramer sixth seeded. Don Dove, of course, uh, having uh, had to uh, win two matches last week to advance to this position, he'll lead off. And that's partially why he uh, he's here. I tell you, we watched Don in, in his two matches throw a triple in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, ninth of his first match, and then throw a doubleheader in the eighth and ninth of his second match. As we mentioned, averaged 166 in his two games. So I'd say he's gotten himself pretty used to the camera and the lights. Now gets himself off to a quick start. Now we take a look at uh, Chuck Kramer. For the first time. Not a big guy, but uh, throws the ball hard. Very powerful ball, gets a lot of turns on it, and, and he has done a lot of things with the bowling ball. But one thing that he has not done and that's win a pro tour, and that does stick with you. He matches the uh, mark that Don Dove put up on the board. Check from uh, Baltimore. Number one ranked uh, Baltimore bowler, 1987-88. First recorded the uh, his all-mark three-game set about 10 years ago, 544 set. He had the whole back row for a split second, seven, eight, nine, and 10, the 10 tripped out. Still a uh, awful thing to be standing up here on the approach looking down the lane at. The best you're gonna do if you throw two more good balls is, is make nine. Well, it's like a parade, uh, Joe. Uh, <laughs> I don't wanna march in that parade. Uh. He picks off one, we'll go after another one, he's got it. Normally, someone will ask you on your way back, where'd the ball go? Because you got to remember, he hit the one-two pocket and uh, left the whole back row. Here's Donnie Dove now. Dove, a winner of uh, one Pro Tour event, that being last year in his rookie year on the tour. And that's one of the reasons he's gotten as far as he has in this up the line of climb. He just throws a lot of strikes. Heard somebody in the audience say uh, before we started the show, about his performance in uh, last week's show, just throws too many darn strikes. And he does. Well, when he locks the arm in, which he has a nice, straight, locked arm swing, and it gives him both pockets. Again, he has the right angle to the pocket. He comes from a little left to center as far as when he releases the ball. He mentioned to me in the classic, he had a four frame and it cost him there's five through the middle. He's still counting on his strike, but he had a four frame that cost him a shot at, at winning the classic. And he said to me, Joe, I can't believe I said, well, you know, that I rolled a four frame. I said, Donnie, we've all done it. Just chalk it up to experience and don't let it bother you next performance. Whoa, what a shot. He can get you from anywhere. Let me tell you, he hit three pins. You're sitting there as his opponent. You feel pretty safe. The man just ripped the middle and gave you a breath of air and you blink and the next thing you know, he's got a pin coming out of the pit and he made this shot. Here's Chuck Kramer again. Does a similar thing there. In Same the qualifying, uh, Chuck did uh, shoot a 232 game, which I believe was high for uh, the tournament. Tough break there. Donnie Dove, spare, strike, spare. Chuck, spare, nine, and he has four pins left this frame with the third ball in his hand. Well, the winner of this match is guaranteed $450. Loser takes home $350. More importantly, the winner has the opportunity to continue to climb the ladder, looking for the $2,200 first prize and the championship. You know, we sort of ran by the first recorded ball mark three game set. I don't know if, if that is the first. I would be willing to say, I think it may be the only. That's 30 marks in a row. 
That's a heck of an achievement. He didn't throw many strikes, apparently, because his set was only 540. I say only 544. You know, he averaged 181, but still, it's uh, for 30 marks. That's really not that high a score. Makes it even more difficult, then, I would think. It means he shot a lot of spares. You're exactly right. There are many bowlers that would give up a 200 game for an all-mark game. There are many more 200 games than there are all-mark games, and he had three in a row. Not picks up 10 there, and he's got 44 after four. And now Donnie Dove steps in. As Joe mentioned, three marks in a row. Make it four. He'll put Mr. Kramer in big trouble. What can you say? The power's there. They're going. Well, Donnie Dove looking to make it three in a row on Duck Pin Magic. Won two last week. Out in front this week. He's showing us a little bit of everything. He's waiting for that first ball, and uh, I'd wait too. I think I'm going to go down back and get it out of the machine, take it home with me. Watch the arm swing. It's a long arc, but it's very controlled. Got another one. I think he's having fun. Maybe having fun, but we haven't seen him smile, although the results of this strike. There you see it, the same as the last one. Boom, gone. Got a double working for him, and Chuck Kramer needs some help here, and he comes back with it. Chuck probably thinking, I, I wonder if he's throwing bowling balls or hand grenades. And here you see one of Chuck's strikes in the left pocket, snug, and they're gone. I want Donnie to take a saliva test or something. <laughs> well, Chuck's going to wait for his uh, first ball. You see Don, he, Joe, he may be having fun, but... <laughs> You haven't seen any teeth yet. No smile. I don't think you're going to see one until uh, after this match is over. You, you don't smile at this type of bowler. It can turn around and come back on you. And we've seen that happen. And there's, I was just going to say this could happen at any time uh, to either bowler, but it, a double is only 20 until you throw that first ball on the double. But that is a stopper. When you're trying to catch up and you throw a strike, get yourself pumped up, and then Something like that happens. Jim Burby, clean Jim one five. Jim so Chuck Kramer, who's got 18 open tournament wins to his credit. Chuck also served uh, two years as vice president of the Pro Tour. He'll step up and try to get something. Going, picks one of the two. He's got 71 after six. And now here's Downey Dove. He's got three strikes, two spares in his five frames thus far, as you see there. Wow, he pushed that through. That was so powerful. I think uh, he's, he's pumped up. He, he is pumped up. You could say that again. Just ram that through uh, the middle there. That's the first pin I've seen him hit that I didn't hear him hit. He's gonna have a 30 pin lead or thereabouts after this ball. Well, 28 pin lead. And we're through six frames. 109 to 71 and I missed 10 pins. That's a 38 pin lead. Well, going into the seventh, Downey Dove with his first open frame in the sixth. Must have let up on that one a little bit, Mike. Good grief. My arm's tired from watching him. I only throw the ball hard when I get angry, and I don't think I've ever gotten angry enough to throw it that hard. I'd hurt myself. He's throwing fire. There's no question about it. He doesn't even let up on the spares. Had 94 on the gun, huh? That'd be pretty interesting. We'll have to get a man in here with the gun and the duck pin ball. I would say that the hardest thrower being probably Peter Pierce and Dove within a couple mile an hour of that. What would you say? 30? It's not as fast as we think. Probably not, yeah. I think I'd rather get hit by a car. <laughs> Nice, nice shot. shot. Now Chuck Kramer. Marks in the seventh. 
when you get a, an opponent like uh, Don Dove, all you can do is just get up there and do what you're supposed to do and hope things fall your way. One ball at a time. Seen people overcome 30 and 40 pin leads. Yes, we have. Things to happen in a hurry, but you have to throw strikes in this situation, and you're generally only going to throw the strikes when you put the ball in the pocket, and Chuck's having a little trouble doing that right now. Had good qualifying scores in, in the head-to-head -to -head earlier today and an 805 in five games 161 average Chuck can post some scores uh, his records indicate that he you know he's ranked in the top 10 seven of the last eight years which is it's quite an accomplishment and he bowls everywhere it's not like he's you know <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Dove continues to hammer away I believe that's his wife in the reddish top. And she records every ball. Well, she hasn't had to do too much work in this match. Using a lot of ink if she's coloring the blocks in and strikes. He's had four out of eight frames. And the other three were spares. No, nope. got seven there, just the head pin. Popped up a little bit. He got there a little quick and uh, just didn't have his feet in place to come through that ball. It, it's hard to pick up with Donnie because he throws it so hard, just what he's doing. Well, you can see him. He said bad ball. He knew it uh, when he let it go. And... We don't like to throw the third ball at the number one pin. It's not supposed to be there at this point. Now he picks up 10. And uh, he has 158 through nine. Well, he's going to maintain his television average. As we mentioned, he averaged 166. He's going to need eight pins in the last frame. Chuck is eliminated. The best Chuck could do would have been 158 if he would have struck out in the ninth and tenth. So we have Donnie is going to bowl who? Kenny Mumal, another greenway bowler. They know each other, each other very well. Probably bowl in the same leagues a couple times a week. Kenny shot a tremendous score um, in the qualifying Saturday. I think he led the qualifying Saturday uh, with 16.30 for 10, 163 average. So I don't believe he has any fears when he places his balls on the rack. The bowl Don Dove. Chuck Kramer finishing out here on the 10th. Finally got a break. He had a 7-8 and knocked the 7 over. Once again, we have the 10th frame where the bowler's uh, eliminated. Actually, Chuck bowling first, though. Right. He's eliminated in the ninth frame. That shows you how Donnie was uh, bowling. And we'll have one more ball here in the 10th. Four strikes and three spares for Don with the double header included. Big finish for Chuck. 128 and Donnie is up and ready to roll. Well, it's, really, it's an easy game, Mike, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's got his average and more on TV. Let's see if he hits this pin. He seems to be relaxing. I hope not too much. Too much, right? No, I don't think so. See, he still hit it and it come right back in the middle. I bowled for months and never bounce a pin out of the pit, Mike. One sixty-eight plus this ball. He's got nine more. <laughs> Pretty One. repetitive game for Donnie Dove in a nice way. 177, 128. A winner, and he moves on to face Ken Mumaw when we come back right after this. Welcome back to Duckpin Magic. Mike Seller, Joe Ronier, Greenway Bowl East. Second match for today. Donnie Dove facing off against our fifth-seeded bowler, Ken Mumaw. Ken comes in as the uh, 
top qualifier, I believe, uh, from yesterday's uh, action in qualifying. 16.30 was 4-1 and one head to head competition uh, in this morning's eliminations. Old 7.58 in five games, so he's had a pretty good weekend. I'd say, and you know, we're getting in sight of the top rung, Mike, as they start this climb. Four more matches. Uh, crown a champion here in the Miller Classic. Been a long haul for these bowlers, 160 plus started the tournament. It was trimmed down to, I believe it was 30. Trimmed down again to 13. And here we are. Six bowlers left. Donnie Dove, who we've seen uh, for four straight matches now. Wow. Quick eight, the seven eight. That hasn't happened to him uh, too often, and it couldn't happen. He's averaged 170 in his three TV victories, shooting 178, 155, 177. Oh, that was close. I tell you, you have to set. I couldn't watch him bowl if I were bowling him because it's just uh, it's a little overwhelming when he's moving pins around. That one, I think he threw a little too far down the line, didn't he? Well, Tried a little lecture on it. And he didn't take that extra second to the value of the third ball. And these are things you learn. I hope it doesn't come back on him, but remember it. Left the eight pin in frame number one. So Dove open in the first. Moves over to bowl the second. They always told me if you had a ball in your hand and one pin left, if you're not gonna hit the pin, put the ball back down on the rack, you know. Rough opening for Don Dove in this match. Two tough breaks. That was a nice shot. Uh, caught the right side of the number one, the ball going into the 10, but he went around the four with the pin. Don's not used to being in this position. He's gonna start out in the hole. Kenny, 10 plus a spare in the first frame. Kenny is a bowler that's been on the Pro Tour a number of years that it's a, it's surprising that he doesn't have a star on his back. He, he shoots scores, he's a good head-to-head -head bowler, uh, an all-around good bowler with a high game of 244 and a high set of 583, and he's averaged 150. Uh, knows how to win, he's won a number of open tournaments. Eight-game world record, 1376. Mark in the second. Opens up with uh, two straight spares. Very comfortable here at Greenway Bowie. He's been bowling here a number of years in leagues. Has never won a tournament here. The Westview Open two times. He's won the Lord Baltimore, which he set a world record in. I believe he's won the uh, Lord Baltimore a couple times. Another bowler with a, a good angle to the head pin in the pocket that gives him either pocket. He can catch the left pocket and throw devastating strikes, or there you see him catching the one three a little light and banging nine pins off the lane. He's shooting the number four pin for a third spare in a row. And he's got it. Ken Mumaw. Starts out three marks in a row, puts Donnie Dove on notice. It's not gonna be all that easy. Donnie open in the first two frames. Let's see what he does in the third. Got some help there. I tell you, Donnie hadn't missed the head pin more than once in maybe twice in the three previous games, and he's going 0 for 3 so far this game. Well, that first game that he did uh, bowl in last week's show against Joe Holbrook, remember, he was behind until uh, he came up with that... Uh, Three bagger near the end of the match. Exactly right. Matter of fact, we mentioned that he won the first two games that he did win. Uh, he won with a triple in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and then a double in the eighth and ninth of the following game. He's, uh, front pin's sort of moving around on him a little bit. He's not locked in, not quite as aggressive. Uh, he's always aggressive, but not throwing it with quite the confidence that we've seen over the last three games. Trailing by 12 pins plus in the match. 
is Ken Muma working on a spare in the third. Donnie fills with 36. Ooh. See him let up just a little bit as he got to the line. Head came up. He let up a little bit. Aiming the ball a little bit, Mike. It's a little tougher to pick up with a bowler of his style that, that sort of charges the line and, and really wheels the ball. But he's doing exactly what you said. Getting there a little quick, not quite as aggressive with his arm swing and uh, sort of holding back a little bit, pointing it. We'll find if, if he continues that. Even if he hits the pocket, you're not going to see the pin action we've been seeing. Kenny with uh, his fourth nine. 57 in the third and a 21 pin lead and a big chance to increase it. 23 plus now and uh, he's sort of putting the heat on uh, Mr. Dove. Four straight marks to start the match. And let's face it, it's, uh, it's also a little different bowling from behind than it is bowling ahead. Last uh, match, Downey got out to that quick start and Chuck Kramer was uh, the one that had to bowl from behind. This time, it's Dove trailing Ken Momoa out to the uh, quick start. Well, and the difference is, you know, when you're out in front, you bowl the pins. When you're behind, you, you wind up bowling both the pins and your opponent. And uh, another two, nine. Two tough opponents. 28 pin lead, well, 32 pin lead. For Kenny through four frames, shooting at the number 10 for his fifth single pin spare in a row. And he's got it. Well, Ken Muma, it's been nine drop. Pick up the single pin spare, and that's the way it's been right throughout the course of the match. Close up look at Donnie Dove, who's got his work cut out for him here in the fifth. Exactly right. Kenny's been flawless through five frames. Donnie's They're still searching a bit. They caught the head pin, but what I was telling you, the pin action's just not quite there. The arm swing is not quite as strong and aggressive. He's not under the ball as he was in the uh, three previous games. But he can bring pins back, and he's got to hit something. Of course, we know what a weapon the strike is, especially when you add them together. Uh, two or three in a row, and we know Donnie has the ability in the live ball capable of putting them together. He took a little glance at the score. As he wiped off the ball, and I think he's telling himself, Donnie, if you're going any further up this ladder, you better start right now. Time is now. Sixth frame. That was an aggressive ball. It stayed under it, came through the ball real good. Now we have to see if he's gonna hit this single as well as he hit him when he was front running. This is a big mark when you're this far behind. Very necessary. Well, we got it. And we'll take a time out to see if Donnie Dove continues his march up the ladder or if Ken Mumaw can hold him off when we return after this. Make your own duck pin magic happen this season at Fairlanes. We have the times, the leagues, and the people to give you the best duck fin bowling experience possible. Fall winter leagues are now forming at all Fairlanes bowling centers. Come in and reserve your spot for the most magical year ever. Get in on the fun, the excitement, and the action of duck fin bowling. There's no trick to it. Just visit any Fairlanes center and pick the league that's best for you. You'll enjoy the experience. We guarantee it. Leading in the uh, match, will bowl his portion of the sixth frame. He's been on target through the first five. Well, this time a little bit of a change up here, Joe. Lift two. The 6-10, a nice eight count, and it has given him a 40-pin lead. Picked off the uh, six. So he'll be open in the sixth frame. He was so used to shooting singles. Uh, from the angle he uses, that probably is the most likely two pinner for him to pick because it's right where his ball straightens out. You know, he left the 10 pin standing, so he's got a 103 after six. 
Donnie Dub 64 plus. This is a big frame. When you pick a two pinner and you have a lead, but the other bowler is now on the mark and you don't want to open two frames in a row, even with a 30 some pin lead, because it's about ready to shrink some as Donnie's on the mark. Okay, we've seen it before, Mike. That certainly is setting the stage at this point for Donnie Dub to unleash that valuable duck pin weapon, the strike, and see what happens. Kenny's been sharp, though. Seven frames, he's been on the front one all seven frames. He made five singles and then picked a two-pinner, uh, hitting his object, and then he went through the middle. But like you say, it does sort of turn the setting around a little bit, and uh, it kind of moves the furniture around on the set, doesn't it? Nice 10 there. Sure was. 113 after seven for Ken Mumaw. And here's Don Dove. Kenny's thrown 16 balls through seven frames, and all 16 of them have been where he wanted them. Wow, fast nine. Sound like he hit one pin, it just crack. That cuts the lead to 30 in the sixth frame. I'm sure Kenny's thinking these pins are going away a whole lot faster than I put them up there, but he made a mistake. Missed the 10 pin, and that's ultimately gonna be costly. Came back and picked it off for a 10 count. Down by 30, 113.83. Both bowlers open in the seventh. Yep, we're down to the final three frames of this game, and there you see the score. 113 to 83. Don Dove bowling the eighth frame. That was a big kickback right there. He has the 247 for a spare break. He had the 3, 6, and 10 along with that. The pin come out of the corner. Wiped out three pins. Got the spare. In his portion of the eighth, and Ken Mumaw will step up, working on two open frames back to back, first in the match for uh, Kenny. And you know, you at this point, you're really not thinking about your lead. You're thinking about what you've just done, and it, uh, it's slipping away, and, and you really need to step up and say, look, I'm ahead in the match far enough, just bowl your game. Well, that's familiar. Number 10. He's done that uh, several times throughout the match. He'll want to convert this here in the eighth frame. That's his sixth single. He's had a two-pinner and chopped the middle to go along with that. He helped that ball a little bit. See, when a bowler does this, you know that he's thinking about the opponent rather than the pins, and it's not what you want to do in a head-to-head -head match. That means Donnie Dove will be able to pick up some ground in the uh, eighth frame. Picked it up that time for a full 10, 123 now. Well, you don't want your opponent to start wondering, maybe this guy don't want to win. You know, he had me down and uh, he's let me back up. And we've seen Donnie get up before. And that miss that Donnie had in the seventh frame, the single pin, is going to be a big one at this point. Because this would really be a horse race had he made that. This is the ninth frame for Ken Mumo, a big frame. That's the way to do it. That was. When uh, you can afford a mistake if you do that and you have a 30 pin lead. Because now Kenny has his mark in the ninth. Don Dove must throw a strike here. Oh. That was well, actually diagrammed it. We've seen this before. We're going to show it to you one more time. Watch quick. <laughs> there it goes. Into the 10th frame we go. Don Dove matches Kenny Mumaw's strike in the 10th and the 9th and moves into the 10th. His strikes are sort of like the line drive home run. You just don't get time to say much about it where the long fly ball, you can talk it out of the park. See, Donnie had that open frame in the 7th. That was Could a big well one. come back and uh, haunt him after this match is over. Let's see what happens here in the 10th frame. He needs a double. Help that ball a little bit right at the end. Okay, he has the three, four, six, and ten. If he makes it, 
which he didn't. It's all over, Mike. He made a nice run at it. It was his fourth match, right? Yep. One three, and right now it's Ken Muma who will finish up in the tenth frame, and Donnie will look back at that match and you know they had an opportunity to perhaps pull it out. We should be very pleased with himself. You just don't continue. Now Ken Muma may make, make everything nice... academic here because he's. Uh, Seems to have found the strike ball after putting together five spares in a row to open the match. He's thrown a lot of bowling balls where he wanted them to go. First and second balls. And uh, Donnie Dove should be very pleased with himself. Boy, that was a quick eight. And it could, if it hits it right, was, nope, not long enough. But he should be very pleased with himself. It's hard to win three games in a row against this caliber of bowler. Somebody's going to jump up and do just what Kenny Moomal did, and as Donnie did to his opponents. Kenny's got a spare to finish things out with a fine 171. And he beats Donnie Dove 171-126 to move on and face Jeff Green. And we'll see that match coming up on Duckman Magic right after this. <laughs> Jeff Green and Ken Moomal in our final match today. Jeff Green, our fourth seed. First time we'll have a chance to see him. Ken Mumoff, the impressive win over Don Dove, and Jeff Green is the higher seated bowler, has decided to bowl first in this match. 5 0 oh in his head to head matches. Jeff out of uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. Bowls up at the uh, Town Hall lanes in Johnston. He's got a 141 average. Starts out quickly, puts a mark up on the board. And here's Ken Mumaw. So Ken do this to Donnie Dove last match. Jump on him quick and not let him up. He's uh, rolled an impressive 11 frames so far. Yes, he has. When you count the number of singles he broke, the 171 could have been a much higher score. He really helped that ball. You could see... Uh, to the left there he hits it for 10 he'll move over and bowl frame number two well we have a minute here let's tell you a little bit about uh, cats insurance one of our sponsors and duck bid magic they've got you covered for all of your insurance needs low down payment monthly payment they've got auto insurance motorcycle insurance and there's insurance of a different kind it's the mumar will ensure that he takes the lead after two frames Cats Insurance, full service. They've got same day coverage. Any age insurance coverage from 16 to 90, you pay as you drive. Six convenient locations. Grab a pencil and a piece of paper, Joe, and jot this number down. Or you can check your yellow pages for the location nearest you. 484-8841. Nice spare by Jeff Green there. That's Cats Insurance. They've got you covered for all of your insurance needs. Jeff Green, spare in the first, eight on, and a spare in the second, 28 plus this ball. That worked out pretty good. It got out of his hand a little early, and you heard it bump the floor, but it uh, found the pocket and blew the pins off. Pin coming off the wall to take out the number five. Here, Kenny pulling the third frame with a spare in the second. A strike. That's a double header. Another drop in. Well, we mentioned the number of nines that he had, Mike, and uh, they can very easily. You start tripping a pin here and there, and you see what happens. You miss a single in the first frame, the number seven. He's 30 plus, and we're going to have a close match after Kenny throws this first ball in the fourth frame. He's waiting for that ball to come back, and you watch the turns that Kenny gets on the ball. He really, uh, I call it, cranks it because he does it with his hand and his fingers. See how that hand comes up? Oh, what a ball. He's left the 8 and the 10 on a, almost an identical pitch uh, that he had to have get his doubleheader in the second and third frame. He'll shoot one and one. That tied the match, I believe. 
Both bowlers with a strike in the third. Kenny throwing his second ball on the strike. 9.57 for Kenny in the third frame. 48 plus for Jeff Green. Kenny shooting the number 10 with his third ball. And he's got it. So 10 count for Ken Mumaw. 67 after four. And here's Jeff Green. Jeff, uh, when filling out his uh, information sheet, told us he was a ticket agent. Gets nine there. Ticket agent with Eastern Airlines. And then in parentheses, he put maybe, alluding to obviously the many problems that uh, that airline has had over the last uh, several months. Mr. Trump will keep him on if he's a good employee, won't he? Picks up the spare. So he's got four marks in a row to start the match. Maybe that was a motivational force for him to bowl well this weekend. The middle, the old stopper, Mike, as you pointed out, and just takes it right away from you. 72, 67, five pin lead for Jeff Green in the fourth frame. Something we haven't mentioned yet, Joe, is the winner of this match will go on and bowl next week in the top four, the final four, as we'll have that uh, action for you here on Duck Pin Magic, and we'll uh, come up with a champion for this Miller Classic at Greenway Bowl. Yeah, this particular format gave us 13 bowlers in a ladder. And there's the middle for Kenny. He stands a pin against the rubber in the left channel. That horseshoes, uh, you get extra for that, right? Leaner. That's right, Kenny would rather not have it. Kenny will clear that pin out of the gutter, or channel. He's, right now, he's thinking it's a gutter, but uh, we refer to it as a channel. Kenny Mumaw, world record holder in eight games. Picks one. Be looking to pick up two here. He does it, and is 75, trailing by six after five complete frames. Averaged 172 for those eight games. And shot 171. Looking for the sixth. Nobody found it. Sent three pins after it, but just didn't trip it out. I was going to say, not for the lack of trying. He had uh, pretty good pin action, looking for a strike there. Powerful ball. He's got the arm locked in real good. If you watch the, here you get a good picture of the backswing, and he comes right forward. He's got that one for the mark in the sixth. He goes around the ball, but he has that ability when he goes around it, the ball's up in front of him and he puts a lot of turns on the ball. Moves pins both directions from either side of the head pin. Just Here's green. From Warwick, Rhode Island. Through the middle again, that's what happened to him last frame. Left it open for the first time in the match. Took out the one, five, eight, and 10. Gotta keep working. He's left the three, six, seven. He's about to relinquish his lead. He'll shoot two of these pins. They'll give him 90 in frame six. Kenny, 85 plus a spares. He's got a tight match, Mike. No one's been able to make the move. Jeff went spare, strike, spare, but Kenny caught the double header and uh, that closed things up. We move into the seventh frame with Jeff Green. He's been on the tour. Pro Tour, that is, 10 years. Get a high game, 225, high set of 539. Three tough frames in a row. He's pushed through three times in a row. Nice shot, oh, well, he tried. He's left the three, four. We talk about not wanting to have two open frames. They bowl two frames at a time. When you get up the bowl, you don't like to sit down with two opens, and uh, Jeff's had the misfortune of going three in a row. We'll take a time out and see who will advance right after this. Announcing the Amateur Duck Pin Tour. 
That's right, the Amateur Duck Fin Tour, a handicap tournament club open to men and women with averages of 130 or under. Maximum handicap, 20 fins per game. Win super cash prizes. Plus, enjoy the excitement of tour competition. Bowl in the next tour, and you could win big. For more information on how you can enter, call the number on your screen or write to the address shown. The Amateur Duck Fin Tour. Be a part of it. Ken Mumaw now on Duckfin Magic as we continue to move. That keeps it close. Two count. He's going to stay behind by three. 87 90. Jeff Green, 99 in the seventh frame. Kenny shooting at the cluster of pins on the right as he chopped out the 2 8 with the first ball. Keep moving up the ladder. The winner here will face John Schramm next week on Duckfin Magic. A man with six stars on his back, Mike, uh, has an incredible head-to-head -head win-loss percentage, uh, especially in the latter. There you see the score, 99-97 through seven frames. Jeff Green with a two-pin lead. Well, it's going to go down to the last three frames. Whoever bowls the best over the last three will advance and keep hopes alive of claiming the championship and $2,200. Pretty ball there by Ken. Reached well that time. He kept the ball out to the right, broke it into one three pocket, slapped him off the wall, but nothing caught the number five. They just want to guard against going around this ball. Reach for it. He's got the spare. So it's up to Jeff Green now as Jeff will bowl in the eighth. Kenny's throwing the pressure back in Jeff's lap. Uh, Jeff knows he's been tight on the head pin three times in a row. You don't want to miss the head pin, but you'd like to make something happen. Put a little extra on that ball, Mike. Uh, move some pins around. He has the number seven. First time he's had to throw a ball in the left-hand corner. So let's see if he executes well. Missed it. We get a little quick with our feet, and the ball just never catches up, Mike. There you see the difference. He stayed yeah. down and come through that ball. It's easy from here, Mike. It also seems it's a lot easier with the third ball. <laughs> Missed that single pin with the second ball. It seems like it's very natural to get it with the third one. Now. And the only thing you have to remember is that nice, nice, nice. Pretty strike there. We get to see this again. Caught the one three pocket and just wiped 10 pins off the lane. You relax on the third ball. That's the only thing different. And you, you allow your body to do what you know how to do instead of giving it orders all the way to the line. Here's Ken Mumaw working on a mark. You know, Mike, uh, when you bowl this game, you are, your mind's a computer. So you put the program in then you go out and do what you put in the program. And if you try to change that program in midstream, you know what happens. You just get all kind of things on the screen. <laughs> and that's what we do. You, you just, your mind functions a lot faster than your body. And when you start shouting orders to your arms and legs, you, you could trip and fall. So Kenny will leave himself open here in the ninth. We're gonna see another swing here. Uh, it's, Kenny threw it in Jeff's lap, and Jeff threw it right back. The bowler's not being able to make two marks in a row, as you see, since uh, Jeff Green marked four times, and Kenny doubled in the second and third. They've been spreading them out. Six-pin lead for Kenny, but Jeff has his strike in the all-important ninth frame. Now comes down to the tenth frame. Winner of this match moves on, stays in contention for the top spot. Kenny must mark here. He really must mark. Jeff's strike is a... A big strike. Kenny with a six pin lead. He can force Jeff to mark if he makes this pin. He's got it. He tried to pull that ball. 135 plus. Without a mark, the most Jeff Green can shoot is 138. That's without a mark. Kenny's 135 plus, so anything over three is going to put Jeff Green on a mark. Oh. Right. Nice finish by Ken Mumaw. It's going to seesaw match, Mike, and it's going to all end right here. 
finishes up with a 145. And now Jeff Green will step in. He's got the strike working for him in the ninth. Strike would ice it for him. A spare, and he would need six to tie, seven to win. Here's Jeff Green. We have a winner. 129, 139. Uh, we have a winner if he stays behind the foul line and uh, doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. I think I would make sure of that. You can get a little excited. You just uh, shorten up your first step a little bit, pop the ball out on the lane. Well, neither one of our bowlers tonight had a Pro Tour victory to their credit. Jeff Green stays behind the line and finishes off in a big way with his strength. Well, Kenny strike, finished that way strike. in his 171 victory over Don Dove, shooting 171. Jeff Green, 159 plus this ball to Kenny's 145. Well, finishes with a four bagger. Made it look easy, didn't he? He said it'd come down to the ninth and 10th frame, and that's it. 169, 145. Jeff Green defeats Ken Muma. He'll move on to the final four, and we'll wrap it up from Greenway right after this. That's it for this week's Duck Pin Magic. Jeff Green goes on to join our top three seeds as we count it down in the Miller Classic here at Greenway. For Joe Reinier, I'm Mike Zella. See you again next week when we crown a champ on Duck Pin Magic. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Duck Pin Magic. I'm Mike Zella with me, Joe Reinier. And Joe, it's been a long haul up the ladder. We started with the 13th seed. We're now down to the final four. Jeff Green comes back this week in the Miller Classic, and somebody on the Pro Tour is going to win us, uh, another start. Well, they sure are. We have 11 Pro Tour victories represented today in the four bowlers, and John Schramm, who has six of them, will be in that first match against Jeff Green. All right, stay tuned. John Schramm and Jeff Green coming up right after this on Duck Pit Magic. <laughs> the winner of this match, Joe Steve Iavarone. A little tight on the front pin. He's left a two, three, four. Steve with four stars. Shot uh, 789, three pins more than John in the head to head qualifying. He hits this. He'll be nine behind after four frames. 58-49. Jeff Green. Out of Rhode Island, a nine pin advantage, John Schramm. John bowling the fifth, fifth frame after opening in the fourth, and he'll want to get started. He left that hang out. A little unusual for John uh, through the first five frames here is uh he's been cutting the ball off a little bit it looks like he's not quite uh as aggressive as john is capable of being third ball coming up for john schramm failed to take advantage of jeff green's two open frames And Jeff Green will step in. Jeff uh, been on the tour for uh, 10 years. Jeff enjoys uh, pro basketball, of course. And now feels a little bit like Michael Jordan out there. He's uh, throwing strikes, feeling pretty good. He had uh, the two open frames and comes back here in the fifth with a strike. Pretty explosive. Caught the one three pocket tight and just gone. 68 and a 10 pin lead plus the first two balls here in frame number six as he waited for the green and black strike ball to return off of lane number 62. He'll take that. That's eight on that strike. He still has a ball left, but he caught that light enough. He could have had a mess. This way he has the five and six. He should be shooting one and one because he's on a strike and it will be counting back. Did just that. Really stretches out, doesn't he, as he uh, releases the ball. 
that nice left knee bend, if you watch, he gets down and... That time actually dragged it on the floor. You could see uh, right, right on his pant leg there. His right knee was on the floor. A 19-pin lead. John Schramm bowls frame number six. As we roll towards the end. Pretty ball. That's the best ball John's thrown this game. He struck in the third frame, but if you remember, it was uh, not on the number one pin. He reached with that one. He's gotten a little more fluid. Those two balls were the, the John Schramm that we all watch. Now well, loosened up a little bit through the uh, first four or five frames, and maybe now he's got the feel for it. As you see the uh, scoring. 19 pin lead for Jeff, minus this ball, and this can turn the pressure around. And throw it back in Jeff's lap if John can do something here in frame number seven. Watch the extension. Oh, yeah, much better. See, he kicked the pin out, too, before they were just pushing through. If you saw where his hand ended up that time, it was up near his face. In, previous, in the previous five frames, he was cutting it right at the foul line. So John Schramm looking to put another mark up on the board here in the seventh frame. Okay, he came, whoop, he came through with that ball. He just let it slip away to the right. Picked up 10, 87 after seven. Here's Jeff Green once again. Two big boxes or frames for Jeff Green. As you see the score on the screen, it, it's a tie game, except Jeff has not rolled his frame number seven. The lead will be whatever he puts up on the board in the seventh frame. As a shot of the spare, the six and the 10. Got it. Nice movement on that ball. He started it out in the middle of the lane and let it sort of back into the number six. So Jeff Green will move over to the left side. Ball number eight, and he's got it. That was a big ball. He really threw it to John Schramm right there with a spare in the seventh and a spare in the eighth. John, 20 pins down, bowling frame number eight. Of course, Jeff already has a strike in his eighth frame. There's a strike for John Schramm. You can see it was coming slowly. He's been working his way into it. It just was a slow start. John's second strike of the match. So John now will uh, be working on the strike. Yeah. And he's got another one, a double for John Schramm. He knows how to do that. He left the single get away. That was a big single in the seventh frame, Mike. Would have put him within 10, pin, uh, ten pins. Uh, but Jeff jumped up in the seventh. Spare, eighth strike. Pulling on his strike in frame number nine. So Jeff will finish first, ninth and tenth coming. Big break there. Got fortunate as it uh, looked like for a moment it might be left with the 7-10. Instead, the 10 got carried out and has an opportunity to put another mark on the board. He hits this, he'll have a 20-pin lead in the eighth frame minus John's double. And he did hit it. He picked up a lot of confidence. He got by that first match and uh, he's shooting these singles like he knows he's going to hit them. A big frame here, though. John has himself set up. John can sh still shoot 177. He'd need three more strikes to do it. Yep, yep. Oh. Jeff made a mistake in frame number 10. I believe he fouled, Joe. Okay, you re-rack, he gets nothing on his spare, and he will now throw two balls. 
Oh, he did the same thing. I'll tell you, this is, could be disastrous, Mike. This is the 10th frame. He's given up his count. John Schramm with a strike in the 8th and ninth. And Jeff Green has to have a lot of things running through his mind right now. He did what he had to do. He kept the ball far left. Got nine out. 146 for Jeff Green, and all he can do is take a seat and wait. It's up to John Schramm to see who advances to meet Steve Ivarone in match number two today. There you see the score. John Schramm will need a mark. Wow. Yep. That was a big help. A big we'll pin to go down there. Compute this for you, but I think John must make this spare. And put two on it. We'll let you watch. He's shooting the four, eight, and he must have it. He's got it. He doesn't want to foul. As Jeff Green did. He doesn't want to needs... chop through on the either side of the head pin. Well, he, he'll take that. That'll give him a one pin lead. Oh. Well, he didn't need it. Didn't need to worry about it as he uh, picks up the strike. Finishes with a fine 155, 146. Come from behind win. John Schramm moves on to face off against Steve Ivarone on Duck Pin Magic as we're into the semifinals. And the next match after that is the championship. We'll have it all for you. Don't go away. It's the semifinals featuring Steve Ivarone and John Schramm as we continue to move towards our championship match. Just three bowlers left now out of over 160 that started this tournament. Several weeks ago, you might remember we started 13th seated Bill Honeycutt took on 12th seated John De Palma, and that's where we started, and we're down to three now. Shram starts, knocks down nine, leaves the 10 pin, and that's a different looking John Shram than we saw roll the first frame of the last match. I'll tell you, Mike, he's like an old bloodhound on the trail when he, he just starts smelling victory, and uh, many, many times uh, a lot of bowlers have fallen victim to, you know, his this barrage of marks and they gave him you know he was all but out of the first game and Jeff Green had the misfortune in the 10th frame of fouling and chopping two and whatever happened it happened real quick and John just jumped up and took advantage of it we have 10 stars represented in this match right here Steve Ivarone out of North Providence Rhode Island he's got uh, four pro tour wins last one coming uh, in 1988 Hagerstown Long Meadow Bowl Steve, another world record holder, owns the nine-game world record with 15.35, set at Town Hall Lanes in Johnston, Rhode Island. He is tied for fifth place in the all-time victory parade. A win here would move him up to be tied for fourth. Shorty Diver, Mitch Lewinsky, Steve Ivarone are all tied with four wins. He can move up to the next level with uh, such company as Jeff Ferran, Jeff Piles, and Dave Volk, who have five wins apiece on the DPBA Pro Tour. So it's a big match for both men. Sure is, and they both know how to win. They both know how to knock pins down. Uh... Well, we saw it took uh, John Schramm about five frames to get loosened up and start bowling like we know he can. Let's see if Steve Ivarone can get uh, in the groove a little bit faster than that. Left himself open in the first. We know Steve Ivarone can shoot strikes. No question about that. He's got the high single game on the tour, the 257 game. His high set is 599. Not too shabby either. There are very few 600 sets in the game of duck pins. Well, first two frames, he's got his full uh, complement of 10 pins, has 20 after two, and here's John Schramm working on the spare in the first. Let's watch in comparison of how John bowled the first four frames last game, cutting the ball. He's got it. I'm telling you, he's on the trail. You'll see, he cuts this ball off a little bit, but he gets it tight in the 1-3 pocket, moves the pins around, trips the 10 out. Strike in the second frame. 
and many, many times in head-to-head -head bowling, he turns these into doubles. He threw a strike, but he knows that he didn't do it exactly like John Schramm likes to do it. Let's see if he comes through with this ball. Schramm on the third frame. No, he that cut was... another one. He didn't get away with it, Mike. There's about a foot to a foot and a half difference in where he stops his right hand when he's fluid and he trips pins all over the place. John Schramm almost picked it off. And he'll come back with the third ball, trying to pick up 10. He does. So now John Schramm will take a seat. Steve Ivarone steps in. 49 through three. Steve. 10, 20, first, second frame, bowling frame number three. <laughs> well, I told you he could bowl strikes, and that's exactly what happened there. Hope the camera had a quick eye. We'll get to see that again. What can you say? 10 pins in the pit. Almost as if they were one. Well, again, right in there. he has the, the arm swing, that it's like a bar. It's loose at the shoulder, and it, it comes, the rest of it is, is locked, and it comes straight through. It just, uh, very powerful. Waiting for the strike ball to come back. We take a look at the score. First mark in the match for Steve Ivarone after getting 10 on each of the first two frames. Can turn things around a little bit right here. He's got to double. And he did. You're going to see some strikes this game. He threw a boomer in the 1-3 pocket in the previous frame here in frame four. He crossed the left side and got sort of this delayed swisher where he took the 10 out with a pin off the left wall. John Schramm, frame number five. Now John's got to get back in the groove here. We cut another one, Mike. He's just not in the groove that we saw him finish uh, his first game against Jeff Green. It didn't hurt him. He wasn't on a mark on that particular ball. If he can make this, it's just like nine and a single. Had a wiggle. That was a big pin. But I think he figured something out with that ball. That was a nice fluid shot. Nice follow through. You know, hit this pin and move over to the lane 61. Bowl frame number five. The problem being, when somebody like Steve Averone starts throwing strikes, you don't know when they're going to stop. You really have to be able to bowl your frame without that thought in your head. Well, waiting these two gentlemen in the top seed, Brian Coolis. Brian standing by, waiting for the winner to be named in this match. And he and either Steve Ivarone and John or John Schramm will be going head to head for the championship here in the Miller Classic. John's really cutting the ball off, and uh, quite often when you're doing that, you really don't know uh, that you're doing it, and you don't know what to do about it. A little English on that one. Jumped it up out of the pit. 68 through five frames. Uh, John hasn't been right since he threw the strike that I described as not being quite the ball he would have liked to throw. He's missed a hit in the next three frames. Here's Steve on his double. Oh. It was a quick seven, then a pin come from, <laughs> look like heaven, to, to take out the number nine. He's got the 6-10 for a spare break. Frame number five, and he's gonna take a, a little bit of a lead here as John Schramm has opened in the third, fourth, and fifth. Steve shooting the 6-10. Got it. So after two open frames to start, he has put strike, strike, spare on the board. 10 pin lead plus this ball in the fifth frame. There you see it. Steve Ivarone. He's got some pins as we're walking around on the deck. The number nine pin. 
spare in the sixth frame, would give him strike, strike, spare, spare over his last four frames after his two 10 frames to start. He has a 19, 19 pin lead. Shooting at this spare in the sixth frame. Missed. Wanted that one badly, too. Mm, well, John Tram knows how to take advantage of those little mistakes. We'll see. Steve Ivarone finishes up with a 10 in the six. John Schramm will be up, but first we'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. Make your own duck pin magic happen this season at Fairlanes. We have the times, the leagues, and the people to give you the best duck pin bowling experience possible. Fall winter leagues are now forming at all Fairlanes bowling centers. Come in and reserve your spot for the most magical year ever. Get in on the fun, the excitement, and the action of duck pin bowling. There's no trick to it. Just visit any Fairlanes center and pick the league that's best for you. You'll enjoy the experience. We guarantee it. We return with John Schramm and Steve Ivarone midway through this semifinal match. DPBA Pro Tour, Miller Classic from Greenway Bowl. On this edition of Duck Pin Magic, glad you could be joining us wherever you might be watching. There you saw a quick nine, John shooting the number four pin for a spare. Now this is where John sort of turned it on last match, came from behind. Knew he was close, knew he was uh, fortunate to be in the match, and when it came down to uh, crunch time, he did the job. Unusual, both bowlers are about 10 pins ahead of the same situation that we were in the last game. Steve Ivaroon, 97 in the sixth. John Schramm, 78, working on a spare. They're all big balls now, Mike. Went everything out, but the 10 pin. He went out the window, as we say, with that ball uh, to the right. Never really got the ball up in front of him, but he broke nine. And, and uh, he knows how to take advantage of these situations. Let's see if he extends and reaches for the number 10 pin here for a spare in the seventh frame. Left it wide right. Sort of did what Steve Ivarone did. So he closed to within 10 pins after six, picks up the 10 in the seventh. And Steve Ivarone will be up to bowl the seventh and eighth. Good look at Steve there, watch the arm swing. Steve got that out on the lane a little further than he usually does and the ball didn't get into its roll and it actually pushed, just drove the head pin straight back. So there again, he didn't take advantage of the John Schramm mistake. John let the 10 pin get away for a spare. Matter of fact, this could turn into a sort of a negative frame for Steve as he still has four pins standing, the two, three, six, and nine. Third ball in his hand, let's see what happens. And a nine pin lead for Steve Ivaroon. Through seven frames, we get down to final three again, Mike. Yeah, very similar to what we had in the, uh, the last game. I can tell you exactly what happened. John Schramm made a spare in the six, broke nine and missed it, and then went on to go strike, strike, spare, strike, and just pull the game out. Matter of fact, he's not as far behind right now as he was in the last game because Jeff Green did mark in frame number seven. Let's see what happens here. Very makeable spare. One, three, nine. It's the most unlikely pin that you would have thought he would have picked off there. I can tell you that if you don't want to beat John Schramm, he will take the victory. Well, another nine added to the total. And now it's up to John Schramm. And he can go on top with a mark in this frame. John's gonna bowl frame eight and frame nine. First ball, frame number eight. He got away with it again. He missed the head pin on the right side. He has the one, two, four. You gotta be thinking though, because the front pin's been running on him a little. He hasn't been stuffing it in the pocket. Let's see if he follows through with his shot. 
Picked it off. That's what happens to the good bowler quite often. When you're missing the hit thing quite often and you have it for a spare shot, you want to make sure you hit it. And we kind of, these guys are so accurate that they, they tend to, yeah, yeah. they, they want to make sure they hit it. An eight pin match with Steve Ivory, 115, John Schramm, 107 through eight frames. Chance closed the gap by one since the last frame, and then we'll move over and bowl number eight. Number nine, that was uh, in the eighth frame as you saw the scores. Oh, well, very similar to the last game. You get John close, he puts the pressure on him. Well, he set himself up. Eight pins behind, striking the ninth. Steve Iverone will bowl the ninth and tenth frame. Two marks, he can put Shram on a double header. He must have two marks to put John on a double. Well, he got one. It's a good way to make the triangle. He had the two, four, five, and uh, instead of making it with a ball, he just got a pin off the right hand wall, as you'll see. The quick action, and it comes from the, these guys keep their hand under the ball so well that the, the turns just transfer to the pins, and the pin action is phenomenal. You stand here and wonder how they make it happen. Now, well, Steve Ivarone moves into the tenth, having matched John Schramm's strike in the ninth. Pretty much all riding on this ball right here. It's up to Steve Ivarone to win it or lose it here. They have the ability, you think they're throwing it as hard as they can throw it all the time, but Steve has that ability to reach back and get a little extra and not pull the ball or do anything wrong with it. It just put a little more on it. You see a bandage on his ring finger of his right hand and it's probably because he's wore, he's pushed his fingernail into the, uh, oh my. You see him grab his head as he knows he let it get away. He just gave John a chance. Where we stand, John Tram needs a mark. In the 10th frame with eight on. He is on a strike. He needs a spare. Of course, a double would put him in fine, fine shape, but a spare would give him 137 plus in the tenth. Eight on would give him 145 and a one pin victory. So once again, he's in a situation where he can win it for himself. He stayed close, hasn't bowled the best he can bowl. It's all up to him in the tenth. He loves this situation. Well, he's on a strike. He's on a strike. He's not out yet. He must make this. He's had trouble with the front win the entire game. John Schramm for the match. No, oh, left to five. Steve Averone is holding his breath on the sidelines as One everybody thought that was going. 144, 136. Steve Averone, Brian Fuller. Championship match coming your way on Duckpin Magic when we return right after these messages. It's a long awaited championship match of this Miller Classic, Greenway Bowl East, DPBA Pro Tour Stop. Steve Ivarone taking on top seated Brian Coolis, and Brian is elected to have Steve Ivarone get started. Ivarone with that uh, breathtaking finish against John Schramm. That match was up for grabs to the very last ball that John Schramm threw. An unusual finish, Mike. Neither bowler marked in the 10th frame. Both of them struck in the uh, 10th. Of course, Steve Ivarone missed the uh, single, which could have really iced it for him, or at least made it almost impossible for uh, John Schramm to, uh, to win. And he missed it and left the door open, and John couldn't convert. He should be pretty pumped up this game. Uh, when you get a gift like that, I I think that uh, I think he's having a little yeah he's having some with problems that with that finger he's... that has that bandaid on it. I know that he um, he grabbed that finger when he missed the uh, the single in the tenth, and there that same area that he missed the single, and he's having problems holding the ball. I don't know if that's something that happened to him, uh, you know, from bowling, or if it's an injury, you know, obtained some some other way. Here we see Brian Coolis, his first ball. Pretty nice. nice. Way to start. Sure is. Brian's out of Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Really? Previous Pro Tour winner up at uh, Wamasset in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. 
Very Three. nice start. Fluid right out of the gate. Both balls, nice extension, free and easy. Nice, smooth, rhythmic arm swing. He's waited a long time. Seen a lot of bowlers trying to take a shot at him, and he's sitting in the number one spot, guaranteed $1,100. Match number 12. I think he asked me about three hours ago if he could had time to go out and get dinner. It's been a long day for all the bowlers, Mike. Uh, it certainly has, and uh, Ryan has been in the, well, I guess depending on the way you look at it, most advantageous seat or the least advantageous. He knew he was going to be called on. Uh, I like his seat. You know, when you sit there knowing the worst you can do is second, uh, not bad. It's a tough position to win from because no matter who you bowl, they must have bowled at least one game. They have that much of an edge on you as far as confidence and uh, the comfort uh, that you develop from being on the lanes under the lights and, and with the uh, strain of TV. Well, Brian just did uh, squeak into the uh, second round with 1484 in his qualifying, but uh, he had an outstanding head-to-head -head morning matches where he uh, was three and two in his head-to-head -head matches. One three, lost two, but bowled a uh, pinfall of 820. 164 average, Mike. Not That's what bad. Got him here. Steve left uh, something pretty unusual for him as powerful a ball as he throws. He had the 510. He's going to be at least 10 behind in the second frame, having gone blank in the first two frames. 11 pin lead for Brian Coolis. He went blank the first two frames against John Schramm and came out on top, so this was the frame he started in. The third and fourth frames, he threw strikes against John Schramm. We're not making excuses for him, but I uh, wonder how much of that injury or whatever that is. Could be a blister on that left hand. Didn't seem to have too much effect there. That's the finger that... That finger and, and the, uh, the middle finger of the right hand for a right-handed bowler is where most of the snap... Most of the snap, and uh, we had uh, two people trying to clear a pin, a bowler and a, and a pin runner, and they sort of clash, but everything's okay. Steve shooting the number seven. We had a little, yeah, trouble. <laughs> had a little trouble getting help a little while ago, and now we got all more help than we need. Now he picks up his first mark in the match. Duck pins is a very exciting game. Brian Coolis now in the fourth. He's got a spare that he's working on in the third frame. You think it hasn't been a long day? I just had to wake Jim Van Fossen up. He's been our statistician for today, and uh, I think he was either in a deep thought or he fell asleep on me. I'm not sure. <laughs> Eight on for Brian. Oh, he gave it a shot. The 5-10. Same break Steve Ivarone had on lane 62. He's got a little bit of a um, bowling aid. Perhaps help his wrist out. I'll tell you, the bowler, uh, you get a little bit of tendonitis a lot of times in the wrist. If you watch Brian, he has a, a real loose type wrist, wristy type uh, delivery. And it could be that, that they get a little sore on him. It gives you a lot of snap, you know, to be able to do that, to keep your wrist loose and the rest of your arm pretty snug. We'll watch his time as, uh, as he delivers the ball. Maybe you can pick it up. It happens pretty fast, a little tough to pick up. Three, nine, 10, very difficult spare shot. Oh, and he has bowled quite a bit. For the weekend, you're talking a minimum of 15 games. This would be his 16th game that he's bowling. Steve Ivaron would add two more onto that. A lot of bowling in a 24-hour period. Well, they were back here 8.30 this morning, Mike, uh, and some of them didn't finish their qualifying round until 1.30 in the morning, so you, you had to sleep fast. Ryan Coolis. Right. 
open frame 45 in the fourth a little pressure in this championship game and i think it's uh showing up in our score somebody will take charge here in a minute and make something start happening good bowling's sort of contagious Well, Steve Ivarone put uh, two first balls back to back in the third and fourth frames. Tie game. Wow. Just did uh, squeak that one out. Just took a one pin lead plus his first ball in the fifth frame that he's about to bowl. You like jumping up and making your two marks. It just, uh, you, you keep old Mo going in your direction. When you don't mark in your first frame that you bowl, and I don't mean first frame of the game, but first game of any pair that you get up to bowl. Uh, wow. Quick eight left the nine, 10, but it's an eight count, if, if that's any consolation. And a nine pin lead, 54, 45. Through four frames as Steve Ivoron shoots the nine, 10. His second ball, frame number five. Have to shoot one and one here. The way he moves pins around, he doesn't have to slide shots, really. He, you just keep hitting hard objects. And bounce them around a little bit. Many pins that he hits come out of the pit, believe me. 64 after five for Steve Ivarone. Here's Brian Coolis looking to get things started again. He knows now's the time because Mr. Ivarone just doesn't wait for you the entire game. There you see the, the little flip of the wrist as he lets go of the ball. That, uh, you really use the forearm muscles when you're, you're staying with the ball and extending because the fingers, the, the ball's out on the end of your fingers about as far as you can get them and you want to hit it just as you're ready to release it. Nice, nice shot. Nice spare there. 6 9 10 for a spare in the fifth frame. 55 64. Brian Cool is working on a spare as he bowls frame number six. Brian's a five time Connecticut uh, A division winner. State doubles champ uh, winner in 1987 and 89. National doubles champ in 1988. So he has uh, won his share of tournaments. There's a strike. And this one's up for grabs. We'll see how it completes in just a moment as we return to Duck Pin Magic. It's the Amateur Bowlers Tournament special membership drive for the month of August only. Join now as a new or expired member for just $25 for one year, and the Amateur Bowlers Tour will pay your first entry fee if you bowl the same weekend. This promotion will be good for all the tournament stops in August on the date shown here at Bowlers Country Club, Fair Lanes Timonium, Brunswick Columbia, and Greenway Bowl Odenton. For more information, call 301-426-0700. That's the Amateur Bowlers Tournament special membership drive during August. Join and bowl the same weekend, and your entry fee is free. Steve Ivarone and Brian Coolis going head to head midway through this championship match for the Miller Classic Tournament Championship. Powerful ball, Mike. He pushed it through. And as I said, a lot of times the guys that throw the ball as hard as he throws it, uh, they can overthrow. And you just don't give the pins time to go to work for you. He's left the three, four, six. Very makeable. He can make it from many places because of the pin action that he gets. Almost slid it. Brian sort of took charge the last two frames, uh, fifth and sixth, he went spare strike. Steve looking for a 10, he's got it. Steve knows he needs to mark here in his seventh frame. When you're looking up and your opponent has the strike, it's sort of a, uh, like a storm cloud threatening. You know that Brian having shot uh, 820, averaging 164, for his five games, uh, has thrown strikes before on this day. It doesn't help Steve's cause. Got a little quick that time, left the ball hang to the right, punching the three nine. All right, shot it sort of safe. He wanted to hit something. As like I said, he moved so many pins around. He can make a shot like that from anywhere. Left the number six. 
third ball, shooting for 10, which will give him 84 in the seventh. Another 10 for Steve Ivarone, and now Brian Kula steps in. He's got a strike working for him in the seventh frame. Another one of those positions, Mike, where he can really open some daylight up between he and Steve Ivarone, or he can keep it close. It's, it's in his hand, that beige and dark brown ball. First ball, frame number seven, Brian Corliss. Nope. Did the same thing Steve Ivarone did, except on the other side of the one pit. He chose to keep it close, huh? Now he's this is on the strike, so uh, ball. he's got a second ball to count here. And better ball. Add six more to the count. And takes an 83 74 lead after six. Not what he would have liked to do. It's still under 10. And when you're under 10, you're not in very safe territory. Especially against Steve Ivarone when. Seems that he finds the groove and the strikes come very easily. So an eight pin lead for Brian Coolis. As we enter the eighth frame. You see Steve has not thrown a strike. He has three frames left. Brian bowling frame number eight. First ball. A better ball for him there. He liked that. You could tell the reaction when he let it go. There's an opportunity here to put the pressure on Steve Ivarone. Brian already leads by eight with a mark in the eighth. Steve would have to come up with a mark of his own to stay close. He doesn't want to let this opportunity get away. And he's got it. Clutch shot by Brian Coolis, and now the pressure is on Steve Ivarone as he will get up to bowl eight and nine. We get ever closer to crowning a champion here in the Miller Classic. He was on his way to a strike and the pin off the wall sort of blocked out the pin that was headed for number nine to turn that into a strike. So he'll be shooting a single. The number nine for a spare in the eighth frame. It will keep him eight pins behind Brian Coolis who has made his spare in the eighth frame. He's got it right on target. So into the ninth frame we go. Still just eight pins separating the two bowlers. Not a real high scoring game, but the excitement and the tension is, uh, it's still mounting as we head for the end of this uh, 12 match. Climb up the ladder to the Miller Lite Championship. There's a strike. So in his two frames, Steve Ivarone puts up a spare strike, and now it's up to Brian Coolis as he'll bowl nine and ten, finish out this match. Well, it's up to Brian. He can throw it back in his lap, or who knows? We've seen many things happening and happen in this ninth and tenth frame as we pass four weeks to get to the point we're at now. Excitement there as the pin come across and fell just short of taking the 10. Like it was targeted to take out the 10 pin and just slid off the back. Big shot here, Mike. Nope. Left it wide. Missed it again, so he'll end up with a 120 after nine. 120, 114, Steve Ivarone, six pins behind, and we have quite a match here, Mike. Steve Ivarone after star number five, Brian Coolis in search of his second duck pin pro tour victory. Brian moving over to bowl on lane 61 here at Greenway Bowl. He's got a mark here, Mike. Oh my, a mark here would have put Steve on a mark in the 10th frame. If he doesn't mark, Steve 
will only need to count. Without a mark, Brian can only shoot 130. Steve, 114 plus his strike. Nine on two balls would then give Steve the victory. Tough shot. Let's see if he can move some pins around. He gave it a shot. Did give it a shot there and have to finish up with these two on the third ball. It's far from over, Mike. You know if we have a tie game, there's a two frame roll off that they go into just like it's the ninth and tenth frame of the game. It's happened before. And we've seen it before right here on Duck Pen Magic. It's not over. Eight on this ball would give him at least a tie. Let's see what happens. Steve Ivarone bowling for the match. Well, I'll tell you where we stand. If he doesn't have at least six after two balls, he cannot win. Anything over six will bring you up to date. <laughs> Yeah. That's a winner. He's got it. Well, that's called putting pressure on yourself above and beyond the call of duty there. Well, you know, and I think if we ask Steve, well, he's 132 if he hits that pin 133 to 130 victory. And if we ask Steve, he tried to give both of the matches he won away. The bowler didn't take it. Yeah. We have a champion. Number five. Number five for Steve Ivarone. Out of North Providence, Rhode Island, 133-130 over Brian Coolis. We'll be back to make the presentations on Duckpin Magic right after this. We're back here at Greenway Bowl, and that's the conclusion of our Miller Classic. Joe Ryan here with uh, Bill Leroy from Bond Distributing, representing our sponsor, Miller Brewing. And, uh, Bill, thanks very much uh, for participating again. We enjoyed having you. It's certainly our pleasure. It's uh, always a good affair. Ed and Chet should be congratulated for the affair that they run here. And it's uh, our pleasure on behalf of the Miller Brewing Company, Bond Distributing Company, and our sponsoring brand, Miller Lite. It's our pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, number five on the boards now for Steve Ivarone as he wins a close three-pin decision in the championship match over Brian Coolis. Let's bring him on now. Champion of the Miller Classic for 1989, Steve Ivarone. And build the presentation. Steve, on behalf of Miller Lite, congratulations. That's your plaque. I don't know if that's more important than the star or this. I think both. Very okay. Cool. $2,200, a first place victory. All right, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, Steve Ivarone with number five, and I think you have number five there, don't you, Joe? I have his fifth star, and I'd just like to tell Steve congratulations on that. Thanks to Miller Brewing, and the man is rolling himself into a pretty elite group of bowlers with that fifth star. That's right, he certainly is. Congratulations again, Steve Ivarone. Thanks very much to Bill Leroy and Bond Distributing, along with Miller Brewing, for being here. For Joe Rainier, I'm Mike Sella. We'll see you again next week on Duckpin Magic. America's most.